Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Showcase. We'll dub this the Unexpected Surprising Lamley Showcase. You are looking at, uh, we'll call this a Hall of Fame of Japanese castings from Hot Wheels, JDM models. And why have I accumulated all of these right now, considering I've shown a lot of these lately and I've never really deprived you of Japanese car features here on the Lamley YouTube channel. But the Hot Wheels world got a bombshell piece of news last Friday when in the midst of celebrating Hot Wheels' 50th birthday, acclaimed designer June Amai announced that he was leaving to pursue other opportunities. This is a big deal. And like I said in my uh, 50 favorite Hot Wheels video, will Hot Wheels survive? Of course they will. But I think this is a good time to celebrate some of the castings that June Amai has brought to us. It's shocking. When I started putting together some of the castings that I would feature, I was shocked at how many models, especially among my favorites, that I was just pulling from my collection. We're going to do this in two parts. The first one is all Japanese cars. That's what June is most known for. But I think you'll be surprised some of the other castings that he is responsible for, namely American and European cars, that we will feature in part two. But let's start with what he's most known for, and that is the Japanese cars. And we start with this. This is the Toyota AE86 Corolla, released in 1986. This is actually the first release. Officially, it was released in white, but there were a few early releases in this matte gray. This has become a highly desired casting, the, the uh, gray Corolla. I think at June's request, it was made a, a running change was made very early on to white instead of gray. We've seen this, we see this one with faster than ever wheels that also had white or uh, red five spokes. I'm not going to walk through every casting and I'm not going to walk through every release of these castings. I'm just going to show you some of the highlights so you can kind of get a sense of the massive influence that June has had on the hobby. The A86 was the first Japanese car that June designed. I think this he was starting to push among his compatriots as a new designer to do some more Japanese cars because that was his passion. And this was the first that got uh, approved. What's interesting about the Corolla is collectors did not know what to make of it. Considering what a Corolla was in 2006, it seemed very odd that a vintage Corolla was now all of a sudden in the Hot Wheels mainline among the Chargers and the GTOs and the other muscle cars that we were so used to. And so the car hung on the pegs. It wasn't the most popular to start, but this is how influential June has been. Over time, people started discovering the history of the Corolla and what the A86 means to so many people, especially in Japan as a drift car, as just as just what, what, what our Camaro in the United States might be, the A86 was in Japan. And this was the kind of cool thing that, was, that June started doing, introducing these models, introducing these cars to so many people here. That story can be told in an extreme way with this next one, the Datsun 510 sedan or the Bluebird 510. It cannot be overstated how much of a peg warmer the Datsun 510 was when it was first released. I'm not showing the first release, I'm just showing the premium versions to prove a point. In 2009, when the Datsun 510 was released, you could literally walk into a Walmart and there might be 50 cars on the pegs and more than half of them would be Datsuns. You could, if someone went back in time and just started hitting Walmarts in 2009, 2010, 2011, they could hit maybe five Walmarts and have well over 100 Datsuns. That is not an exaggeration. Just like the A86, collectors did not know what to make of a Datsun among all the muscle cars that they were used to in the Hot Wheels line. Boy, did that swing over time. Again, they were introduced to the history of the 510, not only in Japan, but in racing circles here in the United States with the Brock Racing Enterprises. And when that first vintage racing, racing was released, it might have hung for a little bit. It did, actually. But over time, collectors realized how cool these cars were. And fast forward to now, the release of any Datsun 510 is just a full-on event. The 510 is one of the most popular Hot Wheels now, and that is, that's like a team being dead last in a sports league and winning the championship the next. Quite the swing for the 510. And that really, you have to give a lot of credit to June for that. He took the 510 and moved it even further with the 510 wagon. He actually based it on his actual car that he had in this um, mint green. I've talked about this one enough from the 50, my 50 favorites video. But same type of thing. All of a sudden, a little grocery, a Datsun grocery getter becomes more and more popular. We've seen this one in the main line. Now we've seen it go 
stratospheric with the Super Treasure Hunt in 2014, convention model, Japan Historics. We've seen the uh, Mexico and Brazil convention model, and now as part of the 50th favorite, Favorites, appropriate 50th Favorites uh, model in this uh, recently released line. That's a big model. It just keeps coming with the Nissan Skyline HT 2000 GTX, more commonly known as the Hakoska. This one was released in 2011 alongside the Ken Mary. They were released just a couple of months apart. Another, you can see June started with the A86, pushes towards the Datsun 510, and then all of a sudden swings the doors wide open with a car that collectors were not familiar with, at least here in the United States at the time. It's hard to believe, even just seven years later, how much more popular these cars are just in car culture in the United States, but in mainstream car culture, but also among Hot Wheels collectors, to be sure. The Koska also has gone premium several times. That led, we'll get to the Ken Mary in a second, to, of course, this gorgeous Hakoska wagon. Again, hard to go back several years and realize that this could be done, but this is the evolution of of Japanese cars. And look, some people say, oh, it's been played out. No, it hasn't. It's part of things now. You're going to see more European cars, you're going to see more muscle cars, and you're going to see Japanese cars. This ain't no fad. All right, 2011 Hakoska also saw the release of the Ken Mary Skyline. This one is the HT 2000 GTR. He did it in a pretty simple white with, de with minimal deco on the sides, tail lights on the back. We have seen two interiors on this one, the uh, single seat interior uh, on the, what is that, the Flying Customs, I think it's called Flying Customs version, and then of course Japan Historics and the recent Super Treasure Hunt, um, just released this year. Moving on, we haven't talked a lot about Toyota lately, the 2000 GT, the classic sports car um, from Japan. This was a Junamai design casting for a premium. It was actually the final assortment of the Hot Wheels racing line that never came to fruition. It was going to be all Japanese racing cars. The 2000 GT was supposed to be in that. Line got canceled, but the, uh, but the cars were, or at least the 2000 GT was done. So the next year it was released in the main line and also as a super treasure hunt. We have seen this beautiful um, Shelby version released in the RLC. And then, of course... Japan Historics in yellow with green. I'm hoping that hopefully they can work uh, that licensing out and we can see this casting more because there's a million more versions that need to be done. Speaking of Toyota, another one we've kind of forgotten about is the 19, is it 70 Toyota Celica with that Japanese styling by June. You can see the headlight covers, you can see the chin spoiler, the flares on the side. Just a tremendous look done in the my favorite of the three. There hasn't been too many releases of this casting, but these three, green, yellow, and blue, blue being a multi-pack exclusive done in the stock Celica Deco from 1970. Should we keep going? Yeah, we can keep going with the Datsun 620. Another popular casting, just a small pickup, bolt-on flares as well, chin spoiler, just enough of that of that Japanese style. All right, we'll talk a little bit Mazda, and then we'll uh, we'll shut this down. Mazda RX-7. This one was released, I think, in 2012, maybe. I could be a little bit wrong. This white version was done um, as a Kroger exclusive. That remains my favorite of the, uh, of the RX-7s. And then we saw, just recently, June Create the 95 RX-7 that we have seen, that we saw released last year in two colors, and we've seen it in two colors this year as well, including my favorite from last year, the Red Kmart exclusive. All right, June took on a director role in his, in his last few years at Hot Wheels. He'd still designed, but uh, was overseeing the brand a little bit more as opposed to actually designing, but he still got his hands dirty a few times with designs, we saw that with the Koska Wagon. We also see it with the Nissan Laurel. We'll finish with that. Nissan Laurel, maybe even more so than the Wagon. The fact that the Laurel was made, it probably is the best oh, cycle or curve of Junamai's time at Hot Wheels. That we went from the surprising A86 Corolla 
to a purely Japanese car in the Nissan Laurel getting made and being wildly popular among collectors in the Japan Historics 2 line. That's the Japanese cars with June. But that is not the whole story. He has done a ton of other cars. I have pulled out a few American and European cars. That's going to be part two. And we'll get to that tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. See you then. Bye. Thank you.